What's going on, everybody? Uh, I wanted to address an issue that's been coming up over the past week, and that's with bodybuilders who are decreasing the amount of muscle mass they have on their bodies. The, they're downsizing, and the most prominent of which is Kali Muscle, right? He, he still looks great. He's still athletic looking. He can still do all his muscle ups. Um, he's still doing his YouTube videos, but he's just a smaller version than what he once was. And he came out, he did a video this week, and he talked about his reasons for doing it, business-wise, uh, health-wise, life-wise. He just didn't really feel like it anymore. And you know what? I applaud Cali. Um, there's, uh, you know, it's not worth ruining your health or taking years off of your life for a few dollars here on YouTube and maybe a, a, a plastic trophy that you're gonna get from a competition. Um, I still think he looks great and he's still able to perform. What I don't want to happen out there is for there to be confusion about um, the quest to build muscle mass. I know a lot of you out there are still strength training and I don't want you to think that it's not a pursuit worth doing. Um, and so I wanna go into addressing this question as to whether muscle mass is healthy or not. I'll also be addressing the, the chemical enhancements a little bit later in this video. So stay tuned for that because I know some of you are gonna jump all over this. Um, but as somebody who has decreased his muscle mass, I used to be a bodybuilder, I used to be a lot bigger than I am now, um, I have looked at this quite extensively. And I'll tell you right off the bat, muscle mass itself is very healthy, all right? If you look into the literature, you'll actually find that across the board, Increased muscle mass is actually associated with higher levels of longevity, right? And why is that? Well, that's because increased muscle mass is also associated with increased levels of insulin sensitivity. Your ability to respond to the hormone insulin and your ability to bring your blood sugar back down to baseline. And that prevents you from getting a whole host of different types of diseases, from diabetes to neurological disorders to heart disease. Um, but then the question still remains, well, well, why, Chris? Why would you decrease your muscle mass for health? And what I'll say to you is this. There's a difference between having increased muscle mass, functional muscle, and having sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, all right? So let me get into that. Scientists think that it's not just the amount of muscle mass that you have that increases your, lo your longevity, but also the quality of muscle mass you have, right? So they're finding that if the muscle mass is not correlated with uh, generally increased strength, then it generally doesn't contribute to longevity. So what that means is the types of fibers that we're developing really, really matter. Now, I'll put it to you this way. If you look at a power lifter, a typical power lifter, who's very, very strong, um, but generally they're not as big as most bodybuilders. And bodybuilders, they might have giant muscles, but generally they're not as strong as power lifters. And the reason for that is a difference in the types of muscle fibers. The power lifter is gonna have a lot more active type 2B muscle fibers than the bodybuilder is. The bodybuilder is gonna have a lot more sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. And this is liquid that fills up the muscles, that, that kind of poppy look, the three-dimensional look that they get. That's because their, their, their muscle cells are pumped with a type of liquid. Right? And that's generally what you're trying to do when you're trying to get a pump on in the gym. You're trying to fill your muscles full of blood, trying to expand them with the cells, trying to increase that sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. Now, here's the other thing about it. Um, the power lifter, like I said, their, their muscle fiber is generally going to be more functional, more strong. The other thing about that is that the power lifter is generally going to be able to absorb more nutrients utilizing his muscle mass than the bodybuilder. That sarcoplasmic muscle fiber doesn't really make you, um, doesn't make you as insulin sensitive as say having more type 2B fibers, okay? The other part of it is this. When we're talking about bodybuilders, we're also talking about a population that eats lots and lots and lots of protein. Now, generally, um, you know, I'm on the ketogenic diet. I keep my protein levels relatively high. But when we're talking about bodybuilders, we're talking about people who are consuming upwards of 300, 400, 500 grams of protein at a time. 
Every time you do that, you're also activating something called the mammalian target of rapamycin, the mTOR pathway. And generally, that's a goal if you're trying to build muscle. So the problem with that is that not only does the mTOR pathway help with building muscle, um, and it also helps with the uptake of IGF-1, insulin growth factor one, not only does that help with building muscle, that can also help to uh, signal cancer cells into activation. So when we're talking about bodybuilders past a certain point in age, uh, there's definitely an increased risk of cancer there. The other aspect of this is that if you have a lot of sarcoplasmic hypertrophy uh, and not a lot of functional muscle on your body, you're also putting a lot of stress on your heart, right? So that's not that's generally not helping you increase your mobility. It's generally not helping you to increase your ability to move. And so you're carrying a lot more muscle mass with a lot more stress on your heart. So what should you, the average person who wants to look good, wants to build muscle, wants to, uh, wants to live long, what should you do? What should you be trying to do? The idea here should be to build functional muscle mass. Keep your focus on those multi-joint movements, the deadlift, the squat, uh, the overhead press. Make yourself as strong as possible in addition to trying to look good. Um, now, I want to address the elephant in the room here because if I don't, people are going to jump all over me on this. Uh, we also have to talk about chemical enhancements. Now, guys like Rich Piana, um, and Dallas McCarver and, and, and those we lost over the past year, I take nothing away from them. I've in the past uh, definitely, um, I've never been down on anybody for taking performance enhancements. And I have taken performance enhancements myself in the past. I haven't in a very long time, but um, you know, we have to be honest about what performance enhancements do. They do Everything I just mentioned, they activate the mTOR pathway. Um, they increase your uptake of IGF-1. Uh, there's definitely increased potential for uh, signaling cancer cells there, so increased risk of cancer. There's also increased stre stress on the heart. Uh, beyond that, there's also an increased risk of turning off all your natural hormone production so that when you come off, you are gonna become hormonally deficient and that can put you at increased risk of heart disease, diabetes, and a whole host, host of other diseases as well. That's not to say that I look down on anybody for doing them. Um, I, of course, I'm not for anybody competing in natural competitions or drug tested competitions utilizing them. I'm also not in favor of anybody breaking the law. But if you're on TRT right now, I'm not gonna look down on you for doing that. What I will say is that if you are on TRT, there, or if you're looking at TRT as a potential solution, there's definitely ways that that you things you should be looking at before you have somebody exogenously inject testosterone or growth hormone into your body. If you suffer from a hormone deficiency, and you know, and and you're looking for exogenous injections, that's basically like putting a bandaid on the situation. Um, there's always an underlying root cause to a problem like that. And that generally involves high levels of total body chronic inflammation to the point where your latent cells are failing. Those are the cells in your testicles that are responsible for producing testosterone. Um, and if your levels of total body chronic inflammation are high, those cells become dysfunctional. They stop producing testosterone like they should. High levels of body fat can also do this. Um, on top of that, if you've ever had uh, a brain injury or if you have total body chronic inflammation or an inflamed gut to the point where it's causing brain inflammation, that can also lead to um, your testosterone precursors getting shut down and your natural levels of growth hormone production getting shut down. So my advice there is to always seek to address the root cause first. Uh, increase your intake of nutrients. Make sure you're getting a nutrient-dense diet. Make sure you're taking care of your digestion. Um, make sure you're healing your gut, eating for fermented foods, um, including uh, resistant starch in your diet. Um, making sure you're getting good sources of butyrate to heal the interior lining of your gut. Make sure you're getting enough vitamin D, enough omega-3 fatty acids, um, enough anti-inflammatories in your body so that you are able to function uh, and able to 
be healthy. And that's what's going to increase longevity more than anything. And that will also help your natural production of muscle mass and your natural production of hormones. Um, so again, just wanted to address that issue for this week. It's very complex. I'm going to put some articles in the description box below. If you have any questions, you can always contact me. And definitely check out the Warrior Soul Agoji at www.warriorsoulagoge.com. We're always addressing these issues in our content. We're putting up new videos every single day or most days. And um, we try to get out blogs and, and resources to help you out with these sorts of things because men need to be healthy. Um, with that, I want to thank you guys for listening, and I will talk to you all very soon.